Hi everyone, so today's video is all about restraints and breaking free of what we think we're restricted to. So um, we're going to be creating a lovely design um, all from scratch. You'll need a ruler, pencil, pen. If you've got a sharpie as well, that'd be really good. Um, and obviously circular objects, but let's get started. So this is the creation that we're going to recreate today. So today I'm using the saucer as a large circular object and I've got some other circular objects I've been collecting uh, and just making sure that they differ in size. So we're going to start with the first circle. I'm going to work in landscape today. Um, again, we will move the paper around, but this is the perspective that we're going to be drawing from. So drawing around the outside of our large um, circle and then with our smaller circles we're just going to go in order of size. I'm going to start with the bigger one and just placing it at the bottom of our um, circle. So just somewhere in the middle, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm going to leave a bit of a gap just so I've got space for the pen to go around and draw around the larger one of the two. Sorry, of the four. Um, then the next one, same thing again, bit of a gap so I can get the pen round and then draw around the next one. Now if you don't have this many it's, it's okay, um, you can do something slightly different and I will show you that one. The next one in size order, again leaving the gap. And going around and then the final one going around that one leaving the gap and there so we've got our four circles and the center one being the larger one if you've got a smaller one and you want to put that in that's fine if you only have the one circular object I've just done something slightly different so we've got the same kind of thing going on but for people without um, lots of different circular objects you can just use your plate draw around it as normal and then for yours yours will look slightly more like a rainbow and just go around at the bottom first one second one third one and then fourth one just using this um, arcs from the circle to create that one so that's the first bit done um, and then we're not going to need the shapes or anything like that after this. We've just done our drawing round to create that bottom section. So what we are going to do next is create the lines that go with the shape. So we're going to use our ruler. And you can use a pencil to start off with. I'm going to go in straight with my marker and go in freehand. Now I'm going to aim to have about 19 of these different shapes around the outside. Um, and we're talking about restrictions. So obviously we've got a boundary and we're going to go a bit different. We're not going to go straight up out of the circle in that kind of fashion. I'm tilting it slightly just so we can start to think about um, things in a slightly different way. So in order to do that, we are going to twist the piece of paper around. Um, and I'm just going to line it up with the larger. So from my four circles, the larger one line it up on the circumference of that and that's going to be my first guideline and just go to the edge of the larger circle so it looks a bit like this okay so that's the first line done um, so from there I'm going to leave a tiny gap and I'm just going to keep rotating around leaving about oh, just over a centimeter between each one and you'll see that the gaps Keep creating that momentum and that whole twisting and turning feel of this picture. So keep moving the ruler around, keep getting a new section and slightly taking the angle. And that just means we're going to have ones that are bigger than others, that's fine. Right, so this is quite a big space, keep twisting it. narrow at the bottom, larger at the end, and keep going around this. Shape. 
and we might end up with more or less than before which is fine we're just going to keep going until we get all the way around this circle now you could stop there but what i am going to do is add my petals and leaves for the outside so to do that completely free-handed and it's your choice whether to move the paper or move your hand i'm it's about just over a centimeter from the edge of that from the circumference of the circle i'm just going to sketch a line keeping with it as a guide and just doing the best i can to keep that level all the way around until you get that to the center so that's the um, that's the guide basically for this bit here and I'm just going to do it again so I've just given myself a set of guides on where I want this these petals to come out to so notice I'm just roughly sketching it for this part although it's an idea it's a concept I don't need it to be you know perfect and that's what I want you to get from that bit so we're going to add in these petals and it's the arc shape that we've done before and you'll see what I mean I'm going to start up here and I'm going to aim for it to be in the center and I'm going to use these rotated lines as guides so it's going to look a bit like this so I'm using either side as my guides and I'm going up to that circle that I've just drawn now if you wanted to do that in pencil to start with, just to check them out, that's fine. So the idea of coming outside of the boundary that we put in is that we can start to think about acting outside of any restrictions that we've put in place. Now here you'll see that there is there are no lines to go through, so I'm just going to go blind bit of faith and just do some rough ones. Now you can go with the shape because it's going to get slightly smaller. So keep an eye on it just to make sure if you want to, you could put that one in place and then make sure the other two fit. But I think I will just go ahead, put my two in now, and then it's back. Okay, there is no perfect piece of work. If you're waiting to make something absolutely perfect, then that's a restriction. Okay, and you've just stopped yourself from creating something that you don't know if you could achieve. So once we've done that, we've got those petals in place, we're going to do the second layer. So it's the midpoint, should I say, of either of these two, and create a more, same thing again, but it's a narrower version. So it's just going to be okay um so you're not quite going to touch that outer circle that we did it's just going to halfway so it's kind of a connector for these larger bits and just one between every single Obviously getting smaller as we go around to the bottom. Okay, you see even my heights are smaller. And then gradually getting bigger again. Okay, back to the beginning. And then last layer of the outside, and that is going to be connecting these two together so it's going to be quite a wide version of this again just to finish it off keeping it quite narrow and using that outer circle as my guide in terms of how high to go to make this work and again it's not A necessity that it definitely has to work it's just a guide
all the way. And we'll end up back at the beginning in a bit. And then I'm actually going to add this now because I'm making the template and this is what you would have downloaded. So I'm just going to add the circles for the outside and those circles are just going to be a big one, a small one inside. All the way around. Can make them smaller at the bottom if you want to, or keep them the same size. Okay, and then that is the outline and the template complete. So now that we've got a template, we're going to start to fill this in with lots of different patterns, patterns we've seen you use before, uh, but putting them in different places to create this. So we're actually going to start not in the centre, but in this um, one here. And because this kind of reminds me of a rainbow, I was using the letter R um, to fill this in. So little fancy as if you're doing cal calligraphy, R shapes. There's a little bit of a swirl on this, all around this part. And again, what we learned before, you can look at the previous videos about revolving to be able for us to see this in different perspectives and create the shape. Now I'm not going to do anything else to that, just that fancy R shape to put into this one here. Next one, again, because of the rainbow, I was going with a fancy A. So my fancy A's look like this. And if you want to see what the patterns are in the template, you can look at the pattern guide to see what I've used to create this for each one. And as you can see, these A's have got that, just a fancy arc on the end of it. It does create a very nice shape when you put it all together. Squeeze them into that side. You can still see, there you go. Okay, so there's A's going there. And then to kind of seal it in i'm going to go with smaller versions of these lines so very narrow um lines all the way around this shape and some will be consistently the same and some will merge and that is okay If you need to do them slower, do them slower, that's fine. But just continue all the way around. When we talked before about the focus, and this is an example of the mindfulness in play. Also from the perspective of, you know, we've just decided to do lots of narrow lines. It might seem like a lot, but we can do it. And 
this sense of achievement when I actually managed to get all the way around. It does feel good. Okay, so that section's done. Now, for this little bit here, I'm going to go with circles and just some concentric circles. So what I mean by that is a bit like what we've done here, just to honour that, but with this, with my pen, just fill that in. Oops, very simple in that one here. Um, the next one along, I'm going to go with a wriggly swirl shape. Making it more bendy. It's almost like ribbon, isn't it? I'm filling that one in. For the next one, going with a three-pronged curly whirly. So that's one, two, three. Next one, one, two, three. And it doesn't matter if yours don't go all the way around. And if you can fit one with your, it depends on how thick your pen is, depends on what you can fit in. Right, next one, we're going to go with a diamond. So to do that, we're just going to do versions of this, but wider in one direction and on the diagonal. And then create that crisscross by I choose two points and then just go from that, those two in the other direction. You don't need a ruler for this, this is just more authentic when you do it by hand. There's a lot of perfect ruler shapes that can put you off things. And then to create the diamond, we're just going to colour in every alternately. So, put that one trying to think now. That one. See, I've missed some. I'm going to do it too. It's amazing. They look slightly different to the one we've got in there because I just couldn't see the alternate. This two. These two. Maybe if I'd have started in a different place, I'd have seen it better, but whatever yours looks like is fine. I'm just going to, whatever you choose to do, just do it consistently. It should look absolutely amazing. If you've managed to do it singularly and do it every single one, that's great. If you haven't, then yours will look similar to mine. Either way, it's going to add dimension to this pattern. For the next one, we're going to go with a triangle. You can start off with a zigzag if it's easier than doing it one at a time. And inside, we're just going to continue this line here. Lots of them parallel as best we can to each other. Go, and I'm actually going to thicken this line here just to make it stand out a bit. There we go. And for the next one, now this is another mindful one. It's going to be um, the scales. So you can choose to do them smaller, wide. I'm going to go for more of an M shape. scales and in the center of each hump just continue just keep going be in the moment so just 
bit that consistency and I like to count so I'm just counting as I do it and you see that eventually it comes together Continuing with that. And complete for the next one is you're going to go with circles um, but going smaller in size so big you can have them touching and trying to get them decreasing in size until you end with a tiny dot now as you get further in obviously the amount of space disappears so you might the number of circles you can produce will might get smaller Continuing until you get to the end. Okay, for the next one, we are going to do the flame. So it starts in the shape of a flame with one, and I'm going to try and put four in there, so two, smaller one. And keep going and see how many you can fit in. So a big flame and then leaving a gap between each one and then there you go. So all the flames round and then seeing how many you can fit in. So the next pattern is going to be a N, lowercase n, it's the best way for me to describe it. I'm doing them one at a time because they are quite large and there's quite a big space for us to fill within this. I'm just going through. all the way to that centre point. Okay, now to fill this, we're just going to do what I was thinking of as Morse code. So 
starting at the bottom, close circle, home, and seeing what we can fit in. And you notice when I'm doing this, I am in some ways angling the lines in a different way just to create that movement here in the shape. You notice I've stopped the lines in the end because I can't fit them in anymore. And again, another example of just because I've decided to do something doesn't mean that it can change. I can enforce my own rules on it. I'm not restricted by something that I decided to do in the first instance. You're allowed to change your mind. Okay? Now the next one is a bit of a triangle um, frenzy, shall we say. So we're going to start with a zigzag all the way to the centre. We can do them individually if you want. And inside the triangle we're just going to put a smaller one and close that up. All the way and then the same on the other side. Now that's the starting point and if you wanted to keep it like this there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, I probably would have started from there so I'm just going to add that in. Um, and what, what I've done with mine is I've just added more triangles inside. So I just added them um, on the left and the right of the lowercase ones. And it's just blocks of colours in different shapes. All the way along and the same for the other side now what you might need to do is just switch it around the other side and do again lower down left and right and each one So a little bit bigger as you go along. And then to finish it off, I just added a triangle at the top, just a floating triangle at the top of each side and making sure I've gone with isosceles style triangles, so it's keeping the base of it in line. With the shape so simple um but just a you know give some blocks of color and some blocks of white space in there as well um, for the next one i'm choosing a letter so i'm going to go with an s shape um quite a curly whirly s so it's going to go like this and fill up quite a bit of a spirally space all the way around so in and using that spiral going with the flow of that S shape all the way around And then at the 
top of the S, just filling it with a circle that's closed. And then just to add some um, dynamics to this, I did do it in a different position, but on this one I'm going to go big or small, just in between each of them. And just going with the swirl. And that's the S part done, and that's it. Now, I'm going to mix it up a bit, and I'm going to go and do a P shape in here. So, that's the stick of my P. I'm quite elongated there, and I'm going to make sure that each P kind of touches the previous one as best I can. See, I'm creating quite a curved line and a semicircle if that's the way you want to look at that. Okay, and once we've got that, we've got that whole shape going in, I'm just going to add another semicircle inside see what this looks like the one I did before was in quite a small amount of space so I might have to add a bit more for it to look complete but no it's, it's okay all the way to the end and then I have to imagine that there is be another one here so I'm just going to add a P as if I've finished it off and then another P there and then Inside here, I'm going to put some, um, not so much a spiral, but just a, a curve, just three of them. One, two, three. All the way. So the next one, we're going to go with squares. So, I'm going to draw quite a large, it might turn into a rectangle depending on what space it's like. So that's our base shape. And we're just going to follow these, we'll do rectangles instead. Um, follow these in line with this. right to the middle and we're going to add our dots in the corner one two three now I like to do it in parts for this it's all the way around and we're going to add some smaller dots around the outside three. Now I'm going to continue with those smaller dots and obviously as it gets, the shape gets smaller, obviously the dots, the amount of dots is going to disappear and that's that section done. And then to finish it off, just put in a small open circle into the center okay and then let's frame off this last bit so we're just adding um so it looks like it's in 3d so vertical line horizontal line 
some diagonal lines to finish it off. And whatever will fit into this section is completely fine. As best until we get to the end. Um, and then that one, that part is completed. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm just going to switch it around a bit because I'm going to work from this side up just to get them together. So my first one here, I'm just going to fill in that bit. I'm going to do a bit of a Y, a Y shape. So actually it's going to start with a triangle and then a long line in the centre. I'm leaving a gap between each of these triangles. You can make them get bigger as you go along. Or just right, respecting the size of it. Now underneath, well inside, I'm just going to add a tiny dot. Okay, and then underneath I'm going to do smaller Y just inside of that one. But just doesn't have the end of the triangle bit there. I'm adding my dot in the centre to the top of the Y. And then, just to finish it off, I'm just going to add some, no, add that line in there. Um, I'm going to alternate, so line, dot, line, dot, line. Just all the way across. I almost feel like it's a person and they've got all their equipment with them, the line and the dot um, is there. So for this next one I'm just going to switch it round so it's vertical for me. I'm going to go with a bit of a shell theme here. So probably a bit hard to draw. We're going to go with a U and then an oval at the top. That's probably the best way to get it drawn. So a U. Just continue that. Over. Until we get to the end. Now to obviously make it look more shell time, what we're going to have is some lines coming into this um, bit here. So I'll start here. It's probably about one we can see. And all these lines going back to that same point. going I'm just going to switch it so that they all come down there what we can do is just add a little bit more shading so that it looks more pointed this one I'm going to try and get more in that centre And for our last pattern, we're going to go with a three leaves, just like that. Um, and that's how we're just going to start the pattern. So one, two, and three. Just go all the way along. So again, I'm just going to work with the sides and make sure that the size of this shape corresponds with the 
enlargement of the mind. It's nice to imagine that, you know, this continues and what would happen if it, you know, just went off the page if these lines were going across there. Now to finish this one off, we're going to just put a closed circle in between them. And underneath, just three, one, two, three lines. Okay. Now, on my original one, I didn't put this, but I feel like it needs something here. So, I'm just going to put in a little circle. That would have one there. Maybe you could see the start of that one there, coming around. So that's the inside of the shape then. So we've gone for irregular lines going in movement. You know, obviously we restricted ourselves, but we also decided to create something in between. Next thing we're going to do is I want you to imagine a circle, a small circle in the middle there. Um, and then this is just going to be full of dots. Just little tiny dots. You can make it about one centimetre wide. Go a diameter of one centimetre and just fill it with little dots from your pen. Not too heavy, but trying to have some type of randomness to it. And then what we're going to do is go for, we're going to go for three layers in here. So we're going to draw those M shapes that I love so much as if they're going into this, these dots. Okay, and it's okay if they go over, we're just going to connect them as best we can. Just showing this with the dots in between. Now behind that we're going to create some odd leaves. I'm going for a flower. So behind this we're going to have all these different petals of different sizes going through and behind that shape. Now we've got some are bigger, some are smaller, some are rounded. Just really considering how the shape would look. Okay, and then we're going to add on, it's almost like it's spreading out, this flower is blossoming. It's going to continue. So we've got even more layers of petals on the outside. Now I know I originally said, you know, we're thinking of three layers, but we can continue and add on more. I'm just using the tips of the other petals to create the new petals and that wonderful irregularness of flowers. You know, they're so perfect, but you look really closely, they're just organised in their own way. They're not fussed about being perfect and trying to get things exactly the same size. They just blossom and bloom. So we're just adding all these petals to the shape continuing to show that irregularity of it and how it just continues and grows and you know these rainbows that are coming out behind it you know it could be its energy sprays you don't know but it just starts from that origin and if you want to of course you can continue those little dots to make even those first layer of petals almost disappear if you like the look of the rest of it making that more there we go so that's the center and then we've come out here now the reason why we worked on the outside of this is so that we could you know, we're not restricted to what's inside, we can go outside of it and create something else. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to continue 
this pattern um, along the outside and just frame this shape. So I'm going to go for some simple things. This first layer, we're going to go with a line. Now I've curved it off slightly and all I'm going to do is do V shapes so that the tip of the V hits with that line that we've drawn in and continue until you've reached the end of it. I'm just going to do that around the outside. Now I'm going to make sure that they're going in different way directions. So again that concept of being free to decide how many, when, I'm trying to make it symmetrical but at the same token remembering that we don't need it to be perfect hence we're not using a ruler for this we're just going with the flow and matching it up as best as we can Even with some of these lines, I'm making them appear more curved. Again, a lovely mindful activity. It's wonderful and respectful to this line here where we can see these small diagonal lines that respect that pattern. Continue all the way. Just staying present. And what I mean by present is just you know, those uncomfortable moments where it might be a bit silent. There might be things going on around you, but you're staying with your shape. You're committed to completing the task. That being said, it's okay to stop. You know, when I say committed to completing the task, it doesn't mean that you can't go away and come back and finish it off if there's something that you need to attend to. But at this moment in time, just really focusing on each of these and then treating each one with the same TRC that we gave that first one. So that each line being unique. 
So that's that section completed. For the next bit, we're going to go with a bit like our fire, but it's going to be more of a teardrop and then one inside that we're going to close off and then just completing that with some dots. Now one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. That might change to five. Um, it just depends on what happens with the space. But again, continuing all the way along. And trust in yourself. You know, you know what you're doing. You've got the hang of it now. has gone on this week just taking the time out to say thank you but using this time to reflect upon it and make those adjustments and you ask yourself those questions where am I holding on to things that are restricting me? Is this something that I really want? Is it helping? Or is it hindering? And what can I do about it? I'm going to play the what if again. What if I did nine dots instead of seven? What if I didn't colour with each one? No, it's having that moment of exploration of the mind. Now for our last part we're just going to frame the shape. So we're going to, going to do something like this um, but more coming out of a leaf. So what I mean by that is we're going to do a curly and a curly. Put that in, colour it in and then add two dots. So curly Curly, peak, then a peak, dots added. Just finishing off. As it gets smaller, so too is my shape. By now you should be feeling very, very 
proud of what you've accomplished. You might have looked at this and thought, I could never believe that, but you just did. So well done to you. And there we go. So, I'm going to date this. So it's the 2nd of May. And the name of this one is, I'm going to call it Restraint, okay? So Restraint, and just think about it as how to deal with your strict. 